Hello, this is Tov from Trifle Productions with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can populate creatures in your scene, flying, swimming, crawling creatures, butterflies, insects, birds, bats, things like that, it's fairly easily in Blender. By using the GeoSwarm add-on, it's similar to the add-on I showcased a while back called the Spider Fi add-on. Uh, this has a lot more features to it, plus this uses collections which I'll show you how to use also. It works in Blender 4.4 all the way to, actually it's 4.2 up to 4.4. I'm using 4.0 myself and it seems to work fine. Uh, renders an even cycles and cycles obviously looks better in result. It's $35, but for the price, it's not that bad. Um, I'll leave a link of the add-on below the video so you can download yourselves and check it out. But the add-on comes with two folders, two zip folders. Let me open up that up. This is the add-on itself, and it comes with the assets also. The add-on itself, keep that in the zip folder, but the assets, you need to unzip that into its own separate folder. And once you've done that, go to Edit, Preferences, Install. And let's copy the, copy the location here. Left click, right click, copy. Minimize that, left click, Control V to paste that. Then click on the add-on itself and click on Install Add-on. And then once that's done, let me type in Geo here. It gives you this option here for the asset folder. So left click on that icon there. Let's go back here. So this is the unzip folder, which was there. So it's been unzipped. Double click, double click. And then when you get to this part of it, category one, category two, click on accept. That way Blender or the add-on knows what the where the category one and category two folders are. And then you're set to go. And this on the right hand side of the UI here. Is right here it's got three main categories the list of our scene here so with the cube selected press delete on our keyboard shift a mesh plane press s to scale this up and to avoid any kind of issues later on press ctrl a so you can apply the scale so from the pop-up menu click on scale that applies it and sets everything back to zero and then when you press on swarm presets you get these uh, these thumbnails here so it's got ants bats beetles butterflies roaches crows um, crickets so it's got a good amount of presets here but let's just stick with the first one and then you're going to click on add swarm and when it does that it gives, it gives us a bounding box where the uh, ants will populate from uh, but you can see that, that they're all in the center there and that's because like i mentioned before this add-on works on collections right now the add-on doesn't know where to populate the uh, the meshes or the models of the ants and this ant here is the main model ant that this the add-on uses so we're going to move this one out of the way left click on the move gizmo and drag it on the x-axis to pull it out of the way and then we're going to create a collection for uh, the land here or the plane but like I said before you have it's good to name your models in blender that we can keep track of them so left click on that and from the outliner I scroll down you see plane double click and type in you can name it whatever you want I'm gonna name this land L A N D enter I'm gonna drag this down when you hover your mouse over anything in blender and it turns into a double-sided uh, arrow so to speak just left click and drag to um, expand that window so I'm um, right now I'm going to create a collection for the land I'm going to left click on scene collection right click new collection double click left double left click and type in land spawn L A N D S P A W N you can name it whatever you want now there are two ways you can put your model in the collection. You can click on the model. You can left click and drag it into your collection or hover your mouse over your scene there and press M on your keyboard. And there's the pop-up menu and you can put, put it in the collection like that. So we're going to choose this option, click on land collection. 
and then click back on our bounding box and then click on swarm settings and then when it says surface click in that field there and click on land spawn and now it populates the um, ants on top of our model there or the land there and we press play on our keyboard you can see they're starting to move around so that's how you can do that and you have all these settings here the creature amount, the main size um, you can reduce or increase this. Let's minimize this. Let's uh, type in 200 here. That way, they're not as many. And then we have um, random size. You can get have them all different sizes. And like I said before, when it comes to the word seed in Blender, seed means just the different variations of how the ants are set up or creatures are set up in your scene. Just randomization. That's what seed means. Now it has all these other categories here at the bottom, spawning options. Uh, you could just put a check in the box to activate that, spawn from a collection and so on and so forth. It has options for gravity, uh, keep momentum, you can turn that on, turn it off by putting a check in the box or taking out the check out of the box. Movements, so on and so forth, jumping, activated by putting check in the box. You can change the frequency of the jumping, the duration, and so on and so forth. It depends on your creature, like with grasshoppers, which this has, you would have to put jumping in there. So you can, the grasshoppers can jump, you know, like they do in, you know, this life. Uh, height randomization, that's there too. You can have them follow a curve if you want. You can have them uh, be attracted to a certain object in your scene. I'll show you guys how to do that. But for the most part, once I, once it's pretty much self-explanatory, a lot of this stuff. But it's it's got a lot of options for avoidance. You can have an object in there that you want your creatures to avoid. There's a second avoidance, so you can set up two objects to have them avoid two objects. And once again, these these use collections. Uh, you can have a barrier set up too. Once again, that uses collections, have settings for the barriers, and so on and so forth. But let's do attraction. So what we're going to do is create an object that the uh, object can be attracted to or the insects can be attracted to. And, it, and it, this goes for the crawling insects, uh, the flying animals or the fish. So we're going to press shift on our keyboard again, go to mesh, and we're going to go to, let me see, UV sphere. Let's put that in there. Now left click and drag this over and we're going to let's name this for attraction double click in there a t t r a c t i o n enter and let's like i said before we have to create a collection because this works on collections for the most part so we're going to click on left click on sing collection right click new collection double left click and type in, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it ATT just for attraction for short. ATT, enter. And left click on our uh, sphere there. Press M on our keyboard and put that into that collection. And once again, click on our bounding box. And we're going to go to the attraction section. Let's scroll down with our mouse wheel and click on the uh, put a check in the box, activate it. And in this field here, left click and click on ATT. And if we press play now, you might not see much. If you don't see much of an influence in terms of the insects walking towards your attract attraction uh, object there, let's stop that. Just go to attraction distance. So let's bump this up to 30, 30, enter, and then press play. And they should be getting closer to our model there, to our our sphere. Okay, there, there it is, yeah. You have to reset on the timeline so you can see all the ants now walking towards our sphere there. So that's that's uh that's the good thing about this add-on itself is all the changes you make to the add-on, you can see them happen in real time in your scene there, which is cool. And like I said before, that setting there, or the settings here, apply the steps apply to pretty much all the uh, parameters when it comes to making adjustments to 
um, uh, your scene, the way the insects or birds or fish interact with objects in your scene, they can all be, it's all the same settings. And sometimes it's just trial and error. You would have to kind of set, you know, set the, the uh, parameters. And if they are the, the way you want them to be, you know, just test it out here and there just to get a feel for it. But it's pretty much really easy to use add-on. Now, one more thing I want to show, or maybe two more things I want to show, is adding other insects to your scene. Because if we scroll down, let me scroll up first to minimize these fields here. We have another option here called individual creatures. Now here you have worms and scorpions and fish and so on and so forth. So let's click on tick. And then we're going to click on add creature. Sometimes when I've done this before, it's given me some, some bit of a buggy issues, but let's, let's, this is just the steps you want to do to add other things to other creatures to your scene. So we're gonna to to click on add cr creature. And it's going to add the ticks to our scene. Did it add it? Let me see. Oh, there it is. It's kind of hidden there, but there's our tick. I'm gonna click and drag this out. Now we want the tick to be with the ants. So you have to drag the tick from um, here from that collection into the ant mesh, which is the where the bounding box is. So let's scroll into the ants there to see the uh, ticks populate in that scene. So I'm gonna left click in the um, in that in this display here. Left click and drag this into the ant mesh, and now we have the ticks. Where are the ticks? Got to be oh, there. They are. They're smaller. But here they are. So there's our ticks. And we press play on our keyboard. Now they're all walking towards the ticks and the ants are all walking towards the attractive or the attracted object, which is our sphere there. So you, so you can easily add other creatures into your scene, but just kind of be careful with it because sometimes it will add it, uh, so to speak, but it'll, it'll only add like the the rig or it'll add the the body, but there won't be movement, but you just have to be kind of careful when it comes to adding creatures into your scene. But that's just the basic way of adding extra creatures into your main uh, main mesh or to your main uh, setup here. Now, one more thing I want to showcase is how the uh, creatures, the crawling creatures follow the path in terms of uh, how the land is laid out. Because with Spiderfy, for some reason, it's not built for the creatures, insects, bugs, so on and so forth, to crawl on the ground effectively. I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to left click on my uh, plane there, the land, press tab, go to edit mode, and then press W on my keyboard. Well, this doesn't do it. In the other version of Blender, we press W on your keyboard, it brings up a pop-up menu, but this version doesn't do that. So you have to left or right click, click on subdivide, go to this pop-up menu, let's type in 50 here, 50, enter, minimize that. And I'm gonna click on my proportional editing up here, go to this little icon there, and then left click. And I'm gonna click on, let me see, that part of the mesh. And I'm gonna left click, and let's pull this up. I'm going to increase the influence by scrolling up on my mouse wheel, make a little hill here, and then press tab on my keyboard. And then what's going to happen is that these insects are going to respect that change in the land, and they're going to crawl up this hill. So when I press play on my keyboard, look at that. They crawl up the hill. Now, Spotify doesn't do that. So this is an extra bonus for... Oh, they disappeared. No, that, that was the timeline. Just went back on the timeline. So this is an extra bonus when it comes to uh, the GeoSwarm add-on. It respects the changes you make in your uh, topo topography is it on the land or on the surface. If you make a hill, the ants will crawl up the hill. Or the bills will crawl up the hill. If you make a dip, the same thing. If you make bumps on your surface, they'll respect those bumps and crawl up and down those bumps as they would in real life. So yeah, 
that's today's blender uh, add-on the geoswarm add-on it does a great job of populating swarms of insects birds and fish in your scene now once you know how understand how it works it works on collections remember that so yeah um hopefully you guys have learned something from the tutorial thank you guys for watching remember to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next one all right adios